people of God, I'm so excited about this teaching because it's amazing to me of how God wants you to move in wealth and have abundance. As you're joining on, share this broadcast, invite your followers. I'm dealing with something massive here because a lot of people of God don't understand the financial anointing of King Jesus. They don't understand it. And being born again is not just your mind being delivered from sin, but it's also your finances being set free, your provision being set free. There's a level of life that you're supposed to live. And you can't live that level of life without that anointing. And saints, I want to deal with that just briefly on here. That financial anointing of King Jesus is so amazing because it took the disciples into a place that they had never been. They were just uh, praying for people and doing deliverance and doing all those things. But then the Lord introduced them into the wealth flow, the money flow, the financial flow. And for you to be financially anointed by God is not you loving money, is money loving you. Is God causing money to respond to you? You're not pursuing money, money is pursuing you. See, there's a difference. When we deal with that financial anointing of King Jesus, it's not you worshiping money, it's money worshiping you. That means that you're having dominion over finances. You're taking dominion over finances. And that's very powerful for you to live a life as a ruler over riches, a ruler over wealth. Now, if you live a life that's broke financially, that's your decision. But it's not God's best, it's not his perfect will, and you deceiving yourself. You're deceiving yourself terribly. Because if it's hard for a rich man that is rich in God to enter into the kingdom of heaven, then Abraham wouldn't be there. Because the Bible says he was very rich and money was moving for Abraham all the time. Job would not be in heaven. Isaac would not be in heaven. And there's a reason. Why would God say, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? And all these men was rich men. Why would God be boasting about he's the God of them? And they're rich. Which shows you that wealth is salvation. It is salvation as well. Now, let's look at this word salvation. Let's look at this word salvation. Let's look at this. Uh, the word salvation in the Hebrews, it says, in, in, in part of his Greek, it says it is being saved or protected from harm or being saved or delivered from a dire situation. Saints, watch this. It's saying that salvation means to be saved are protected from harm. Now, saints, let me ask you a question. If you get kicked out your house and now you homeless and anybody can rob you, access you now, are you really protected from harm? So you see that financial issue, if it's there, you're not really walking in salvation because are you protected from harm? One of the definitions in the Hebrew is to be protected from harm or being saved and delivered from a dire situation. Now, saints, a dire situation is like a dangerous situation. So, saints, when you start losing stuff and, and you in harm's way and you hungry and you don't got money to pay for this, you may need some medicine and God works through medicine. You don't got money to pay for your medicine, all type of stuff. These are dire situations. So salvation means that I am saved, protected from dire situations. So wealth is salvation because it protects you. It defends you from dire situations. And you don't have to be a rocket scientist to know that. You, you don't got to be extremely deep to know that. You, blessed be God. You know good and well. 
that if if you don't have the level of finances that you're supposed to have, there are going to be some things that's going to overtake you. There are dire situations. You don't have enough money to do this. You don't have enough money to do that. And so now you're pit in harm's way because you don't got that amount of money that you need. When people threaten to kick you out because you don't got enough money that you need. So saints, wealth is a supply of God's salvation to you. If you take a note, write this down. Wealth was created for you to eat it. It is divine food. It is divine nourishment. That's why Isaiah says that you shall, you shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. You shall eat the wealth because wealth is a divine food. And God feeds it to those that obey his voice through sowing. That's God's kingdom system. The gospel is sowing and reaping. That's what the gospel is all about. Because you may say, no, the gospel is all about Jesus. Jesus was sown. There would be no Jesus if there wasn't sowing and reaping. <laughs> the gospel is sowing and reaping because the father had to sow Jesus for there even to be a gospel. So that's what the gospel is all about. It's all about sowing and reaping. So when I start sowing, I step into what the father did to save me. Now, if the father used this technique, this strategy to deliver you from your sin, how much more you need this strategy to deliver you from all of your curses, all of the things in your life that need to be changed? Because di watch this, out of everything the father could think of, he thought about sowing his seed to get you out of the devil's grip. Out of everything the father could have thought about, he could have spoke to the earth. He could have sent an angel. He could have commanded something out of, out of his genius idea. The father chooses to send Jesus. So the father is saying, how can I deliver man from their sin? And his solution was, I'm going to sow my way out for them. I'm going to give my best. Saints, how much more when you start giving your best, you start sowing, you start honoring God. With your money. That you are choosing to live a life of deliverance. You're choosing to live a life. That is saved. That is free. Now, saints, let's look at this word again. Salvation in the Hebrew. It says that. It is to be saved or protected. From harm or being saved or delivered from a dire situation. So any dire situation. That's what salvation does. It sets you free from it. So saints, now we understand how money answers all things. I think, what is that, Ecclesiastes 10, 19 or somewhere in Ecclesiastes? Money answers all things. How is money answering all things? Because it is delivering you from dire situations. So wealth is salvation. Riches is salvation, divine riches. Riches that come from God. It delivers you. Wealth that comes from God, it delivers you. I, I want you to remember this. I'm not talking about the wealth and the money that comes from the devil. I'm talking about wealth that comes from God. It sets you free. It sets you free. Now, saints, let's go here as well. Let's go here because this is so powerful to me. When I received the power to get wealth, I become a deliverer. The same way like a Messiah, like a savior, like a deliverer. When I receive the power to get wealth, I receive deliverance power over every single form of evil. Now, 
Now, let's go here. Another definition for salvation in the Hebrew is it is the saving of the soul from sin and its consequences. It is the saving of the soul. It is the saving of the soul. Salvation is the saving of the soul from sin and its consequences. Now, let's go here. If it is the saving of the soul from sin and its consequences. Let me just say this. And, and young lady that, that keeps saying that, uh, you keep saying that money does nothing. I know that it don't do nothing because you, you got a profile picture with your weave looking like that. So I understand that you never had an encounter with money. All right. So we all know that. Like we got over a thousand plus viewers that thousands of viewers that watch this broadcast. If they look at your profile picture, they know that money don't do nothing. All right. But you never had no money. All right. So if, if, if you want to stay broke with that peacock looking wig that you got on looking all weird, uh, then just leave the broadcast because you never had no money. No way. So you can't talk on something that you never had. Um, so, 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 so we, money ain't did nothing for you yet. All right. So you're you going to have to get off of this line because I'm not, I didn't come to, to support no poverty spirit. You, you come on here, you come on my line looking like that. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. You want to stay looking funny like that and you want to stay uh, broke. Well, get off, get off my line. This is for people that want to live the God type of life, not people that want to look stupid, want to look weird, and then want to sit right there and, and want to promote why you look weird. The more you get money, the better you can represent God and look good for God. That's why you look like that. And then the devil got you in the midst of your foolishness and looking like that. You want to sit right here and be a voice for Satan on why you broke. Yeah, money can't do nothing for you because you ain't got no money. And then you're too stupid to get some. And, and th this also for the rest of the people that get on my line and you always got something to say with your broke self. If you don't got no money, you can't talk on God's behalf concerning money. If you want the devil to keep you in a grip, keep you poor, Keep you underneath slavery. That's your decision. I'm a wealthy man. I'm a rich man. And I have wisdom from God. And I'm anointed to teach people how to get out of financial slavery and financial witchcraft. This is a part of my assignment. If you want to serve a Jesus in your head that's broke, that don't give you abundant life, that don't give you the hundredfold, that's your prerogative. You can, you can choose to serve a fake God in your head that ain't got nothing. But the Jesus that has taken over my life has made me rich, has made me wealthy. And there's an anointing that you can walk in yourself. I don't want to hear it. You poverty spirits that be coming on my line always got something to say like you super saved. You just talking about money because you're broke. People that don't have money and don't want to listen to God, they always rejoice over the fact, no money, no money, no money. But you can't do nothing with no money. You, if you don't have no money, that means that you don't care about souls. Why wouldn't you want to be rich if you want to reach the world with the gospel? It takes money to be on TV. It takes money to travel. It takes money. If you want to help people and you truly a woman of God or a man of God, you want God to make you rich. How dare you act like you of God by being some financial fool 
when the Holy Spirit showing you a better way. You don't want to buy somebody a house. How many of you all got parents? You don't want to take care of your parents. You don't want to have enough money to be blessing to people that you love. Well, you wicked. So, so don't try to make up your own gospel because you want to sit there with your broke self and not do nothing major for God because you lazy and you crazy. For people that want to do something for God, we want God to make us richer and richer and richer because we want to fund his gospel and we don't want to do it with no roaches crawling on the wall. We don't want to do it with no ugly looking building. We want to do it to the highest esteem. If you want to love people and love your God correctly, you will want God to make you wealthy. If you don't want him to make you wealthy, then sit your dumb self down. Only dumb people don't want to be wealthy because you ain't going to do nothing. You okay with being at the financial level you at because you're not a giver. You don't have other people in mind. You're selfish. Wealth gives you the opportunity to show people the love of God. You can't do it because you're wicked. If you don't want to be wealthy and rich for God, it's because you're evil. You want to talk about you want to go to heaven and you up there storing up treasures in heaven. You fool. You storing up treasures in heaven while people are on earth that need you to listen to God so that you can be a blessing to them. How wicked are you? Wealth empowers you to show the love of God to people. If you don't want to be rich, if you don't want to have nice things, isn't, it don't make you holy, just make you stupid. Because Jesus walking on streets of gold. So, so while everybody preaching about how Jesus don't want us to go after these things and, and he don't want and he want us to wait till we get to heaven. Listen, Jesus up there walking on streets of gold. That's very contrary to how people present Jesus to you. So, so for someone that's walking on gold, you think that he can't put gold in your hands? If, if, if you love poverty, you got demons on you. If you love, if you are right with your financial level and you, you choose to stay there for the rest of your life, you deceive. The blessing of the Lord is going to make you rich. So, so if you don't want to be rich, you're not blessed. You're not empowered by God. You're not empowered by the spirit. That's Satan's joy to keep on stealing from you. How are you going to let the devil keep on stealing from you? And you're supposed to be a royal priesthood. That goes against what the word says you are. Psalm 115 verse 14 says the Lord shall increase you more and more. How the Lord saying that he's going to increase you more and more and you choose to live in poverty. That's crazy. Do you believe the Bible or do you believe your dumb self? Because your dumb self not going to help you live the way that God wants you to live. You got to leave your dumb self and choose the word of God. The Bible got all type of wealth in here. Job is the richest man on the East. How come God is boasting about Job? The Bible says that money answers all things. So, so there's people saying, no, money don't answer all things. Oh, that was just, that, that didn't mean that. Yeah, well, that's what it said. It said that money answers all things. So you, you telling God's word that it does not mean what it said? Wow. You smart. We, we, need, to, we need to fire God and make you God. We need to pitch you on, on, in, in the heavenlies. That's what we need to do. We need to pitch you in the heavenlies. We need to make you the creator of the universe. We need to fire God and hire you and pitch you up there. You see how dumb that is? You got to believe the word of God. If you say that you of God, why you hate the word? And saints, let me, say, let me tell you this. 
There's no such thing about pre preaching the prosperity gospel or preaching anything. It's about preaching the word. Some preachers are so sissified now, they don't want to say prosperity because they're scared of you. There are men that call themselves men of God. They're scared to say prosperity because they don't want to be attacked. They don't want nobody to talk about them. They're trying to save their legacy. What legacy they're trying to save, I don't know. That's how awful people have strayed from the word. They're scared to even say what the word says. One time I heard a preacher that I had admired. He said, I don't want to talk about, I don't want to say prosperity no more. I want to use another word. <laughs> I lost all respect for him. I lost all respect for him. I really did. I used to admire that man too. I lost all respect for him. Because I said, if the world can beat your brains down to the degree, you don't want to speak the word of God no more. Oh, wow. Now, let's get back to this scripture. Let's get back to this word of God. Now, let's go here. The Bible says it talks about salvation, but in the Hebrew, it says salvation is the saving of the soul from sin and its consequences. One of the consequences for sin is being broke. After Adam sinned, Adam was told by God that you shall be provided for by the sweat of your brow. Now you're going to have to make something happen for yourself. I'm not going to supply for you like I was supplying for you. You're going to have to supply for you now. Saints, think about this. God is telling Adam, because you disobeyed me, I'm not going to take care of you like I was taking care of you. How is it his sin affects God's provision? That shows you how lack, not having money, not having abundance, not being wealthy, it started because of disobedience. That wasn't God's original way. God's original way was not poverty. It was not financial issues. It was to be rich and being wealthy. But watch what stops it, sin. Now look what uh, uh, salvation says in the Hebrew. One of the definitions says, it is to be delivered from, the from, from, from sin and the consequences of sin. Wow. So it's telling you that when you're operating in salvation, it means that you are being delivered from sin's consequences. So you're going to be delivered from money issues, money delays, money poverty, money lack, money issues, money, money slavery. Because that's what occurred when Adam sinned. Now, saints, I want you to watch this as well. Not only did money get affected because of Adam's decision to sin. But now all of humanity was going to be born into a situation where they was going to have to reactivate the blessing because the curse was sitting on them. Now, let's deal with this. Galatians 3.13 says Christ has redeemed you from the curse. So 
redeemed mean that he bought you back, you're purchased by him. Now, let's deal with this. If you have been redeemed, you've been delivered, you've been set free from the curse, That means that now you have been saved. You have salvation from the curse. Now, saints, I want to show you something in the Bible. We're dealing with the word of God. It says that Christ has redeemed you from the curse, Galatians 3.13. Now, let's go to Hebrews chapter 5, verse 9. It says, and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all of them that obey him. So watch this, people of God. If you don't obey him, you're not redeemed from the curse. Wow. So the only way for you to be redeemed from the curse is you're going to have to do what he tells you to do. That's going to stop the curse from manifesting. Or else, if you don't obey, the curse still there. So saints, watch this here. Some people read the text and say, Christ has redeemed me from the curse. But Hebrews gives you a definition to, to solidify what really went on. It says he became the author of eternal salvation, meaning that this deliverance is forever, only unto them that obey him. So watch this. If you don't give, if you're not a cheerful giver, if you're not a sower into your man of God, you're not redeemed from financial curses. Your man of God is a soul that you sow money into, you sow your seed into, and as you're sowing into them, you're obeying him. So now he's the eternal salvation unto you in your financial place. Remember, salvation is to be delivered, protected from a dire situation, and it's also to be uh, delivered from sin and its consequences or its curses. Think about that. Salvation is to be delivered from the curses of sin, the wages for sin, which is death, which is separation from God in your mind, in your body, your health, in your money, your wealth. Saints, do you know what prosperous mean? In the Greek, one of the definition of prospers in the Greek is to succeed in business affairs. That's amazing to me. That's amazing to me. That's amazing to me. Oh, that's amazing to me. One of the definitions of prospers in the Greek is to succeed in business affairs. So when God says that he wish above all things that you prosper, he's saying, I wish above all things that you succeed in all of your business affairs, things that are pertaining to your provision, your prosperity. I want you to be successful. People of God imagine that God is saying, when we deal with your finances, when we deal with your income, when we deal with your revenue, I want you to have victory, success, and I want you to be on top. The money trucks and the money bags of King Jesus are real. You ever saw those trucks delivering money to businesses in the morning or in the afternoon to supply that business with money? Well, guess what? How do you succeed in the father's business? He will supply money, trucks to you. He'll deliver finances so that you can complete the work of God for your life. When you are about the father's business, those money trucks will be delivered to you and God will make deposits into your life so that you can help your man of God finish his assignment. So that you can sow into God's vision on earth. So that you can sponsor and support what the Lord wants to accomplish in the earth. 
The same way the money trucks visit these worldly companies and deliver money to them, the same way God has money trucks that he delivers to the sower because he knows that the sower is about his business. He knows that the sower wants to accomplish his agenda. So he will bring the money trucks into the sower's life so that the sower will be empowered to help the work of God to go forth in a classic way, in a luxurious way, in a extravagant way. I receive money trucks in my life because I'm about kingdom business. I receive money trucks in my life because I'm about pushing the kingdom. I want God's vision to get done. I want my man of God to be able to accomplish what the Lord has promised him with excellency. And as I take care of my Elisha, God going to give me the prophet's reward. God going to come to me and say, what shall I give you? He going to do unto me what he did to Solomon. What shall I give you? How can I bless you? Solomon got God to inquire about his desires. Wow. Which shows you that sowing gets God to inquire about your desires. He'll come to you as a woman. He'll come to you as a man and say, what do you want from me? Solomon activated this. Saints, you see what we learned in this broadcast? That Christ has redeemed you from the curse. He has given you salvation. But then Hebrews 5 verse 9 tells you that he only becomes the author of your eternal salvation if you obey him. So if you don't obey him, it don't matter if he redeemed you. It's not activated in your life. So curses shall be seen on you. Curses shall move upon you. You shall see curses in your money if you're not sowing. You won't see issues. Now, and I say, some people say, well, well, what about the children of the devil? They don't sow no money. How come they rich? How come they wealthy? Because they got a covenant with Satan. They end up in hell afterwards. Because they're not in the position of blessed. They're in the position of, as thieves. Remember, Jesus told the parable about the rich man. He said, let me store up some more. And then, and then he said, you don't know that your soul is required of you. Not talking about the, the rich man that dealt with Lazarus. This is another rich man. He told him, you don't even know that your soul is required of you. And that man died. And he went to hell as a parable. Because people that are not serving God, when they become wealthy and rich, those riches and wealth only produce death. Because it's sinful money. It's sinful pro provision. That takes them to hell. That's who Jesus was talking about when he said it's hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. He's not talking about me or you. He's talking about people that's not serving him that acquire much and they get plenty and they're not obeying his voice. That money, it stops them from entering into the kingdom of God because the kingdom of God is a sowing kingdom. So, it's hard, meaning it's difficult, meaning it's nearly impossible for them to step into sowing because they already believe that their system of getting rich works. They believe that their system to get wealthy works. So when God speaks to them about sowing a seed, into a man of God, into the gospel, it seems foolish to them. So Jesus said it's hard for them to enter because the kingdom is about sowing. The kingdom is a sowing and reaping system. So God was saying it's going to be difficult for them to enter. Now, let's go further because that's still elementary. That's still elementary. Exodus chapter 25, verse 3. Exodus chapter 25, verse 3. Let's deal with this. Exodus chapter 25, verse 3. Let's deal with this. Exodus 
in verse, no, Exodus chapter 25, verse one. The Lord said to Moses, tell the Israelites to bring me an offering. In verse one and two, the Lord said to Moses, tell the Israelites to bring me an offering. Now, saints, I want you to look at this. Why is God asking Moses to tell them to bring him an offering? God wants to be worshipped. An offering is a gesture, a decision to worship God truthfully. You take a note, write that down. He wants them to sow into him. But people of God, I find this profound that the Lord is verbalizing to Moses, tell them to bring me an offering. Tell them. Saints, God is telling his prophet, tell the people to bring me an offering. Now, this is so profound to me. He said, bring me an offering and watch what he tells Moses. You are to receive the offering for me. Wow. Wow. Did you hear that? He says you are to bring them an offering. Tell them to bring me an offering, but you are to receive the offering for me. So, they're not going to give me this money by lifting up their hand to heaven and saying, Father, this your money. Here, I give it to you. They're going to get this money and sow it into me by giving it to you. You're going to collect the money for me. Wow. Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, this heavy. This heavy, boy. Oh, this heavy, boy. Oh, this heavy. Oh, this something right here. This something. Look what God tells Moses. Go tell the people that I want them to sow money, but you are to receive that money for me from everyone whose heart prompts them to give. Saints, look what God says here. You are to receive the offering for me from everyone whose heart prompts them to give. So saints, some people's heart will not prompt them to give because they don't love God for real. It's all a fake thing for them. Wow. If your heart prompts you to give, it shows you that your heart is pure. Wow. It shows you that your heart is on its way to heaven. If your heart not prompted to give, it's because your heart is deceitfully wicked. Look what God said. Tell them to bring me an offering. But the only ones that's going to really give the offering is those who hearts prompt them to give. Meaning that their heart really fears God. Their heart really loves God. Their heart is really on its way to heaven. They're not deceiving themselves. See, see, people of God, when you become a sower, rejoice. Because that means that you are the real child of God. There are many people calling themselves a child of God. There's many people saying that they love God. But they are not prompted to give. Because it's faith. At the end of their life, they'll find out that they was just playing. Because if you really did love honor, worship God, why didn't your heart prompt you to give? Why didn't you offer money to God constantly in your life on earth? Why didn't you seek to offering mo offer money to God on earth? Why didn't you pursue that? If you really did love God, fear God, care about God, but it was all fake. Saints, imagine that sowing was going to be a deciding factor 
of who was really the, the wheat and who was the tear. Now, saints, look at what God does when he talks about Satan. He talks about sowing. He said the sower goes and sows. Look, look, look what he uses the sowing principle to reveal to you how Satan is a thief, how he steals the word from you, how he steals your destiny, how he steals your assignment, how he steals your focus, your fervency, your fire for God. But look what he does. He starts talking about the sowing realm because the sowing realm is where God exposes who really loves him, who really fears him, who really wants him from those that are just playing around. So the, so the sowing account, the sowing account shows you where you stand with God. Think about this. Your sowing account shows you how much you love Jesus or if you love Jesus at all. Let's go here in the Bible right here. Let's go here. Let, let's go to Exodus chapter 25. It says, tell the Israelites, the Lord said to Moses, verse one, Exodus 25, tell the Israelites, the Lord said to Moses, tell the Israelites to bring me an offering. Bring me a seed. And you are to receive that seed, that money for me from everyone whose hearts prompt them to give. These are the offerings that you are to receive from them. Wow, oh my God. Oh my God. Look, look, let's go verse three. These are the offerings you are to receive from them. Here's what the Lord said. Only gold, silver, and bronze which are all different financial levels. <laughs> Exodus chapter 25, verse three. He said, these are the offerings you are to receive from them. Gold, silver, and bronze. The Lord is saying the only offering that you take from these people don't receive them saying that I love them, I, that they love me. Don't receive from them offering up clothes. Don't receive shoes. Don't receive no gift card. Don't receive no, no, no letter in the mail talking about I'm so grateful for God in my life. No, 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 no. The only thing you receive from them is money. Saints, I'm shocked. That God would even magnify in the text. This is what they are supposed to sow. You see how God is specific about sowing? You see how sowing money touches God? Now, saints, what was going to be their harvest for sowing? Their harvest for sowing was that he was going to release the kingdom. He was going to release the life that they wanted to live. Enjoyment, pleasure. What was going to be the harvest for them heeding Moses and putting that money in his hands, that gold, that silver, that bronze? And saints, there was other things that God told them to give. He told them to give other things in that offering. But look at the first three things that God tells them to give. I want you to give money. Saints, imagine this out of everything. God magnified, this is what I want first. Because I want you to give this 
so that I know that everything else that you've given is out of purity. Saints, look at what God is saying. I want you to sow this money first so that everything else you're sowing, I can know that you're sowing it in the right spirit. Because if you can give me money and money is the transaction that you use to save yourself on earth, money is the transaction that you use to make sure that you're good, that your children good, that your house good, that your car good, that your transportation area is good, that you make sure that yourself is good. If you can take that and sow it, I know that you trust me. God asks for other offerings in, in, in Exodus 25, but he magnified, don't receive unless they give you this offering of gold and silver and bronze. These are all financial levels. And, and see, people of God, imagine people that don't read the word of God. They hate stuff. They hate when a man of God telling you to sow. They hate when a man of God telling you about giving. They hate when the man of God come and tell you that God wants you to sow money into his kingdom. He wants you to be spontaneous and creative with your sowing. Think about what you're sowing unto God and give God your best amount of money. Give God the, the best amount of, of finances that you have. People think that that's carnal, but look at your God. So, so if that's carnal, then we, we you calling the Lord carnal. You calling the Lord fleshly. You calling the Lord a devil. Because this is what the Lord said in Exodus 25. Go and Moses, go tell the people, I want them to sow money to you. Sow the offering to you. And you gonna take up that offering for me. Now, saints. We deal with this, but what? there's a harvest connected to all of this. And it's prosperity and pleasure. When you sow in, you activate prosperity and pleasure. You get that from Job 36, 11. If you obey and serve him, you'll spend your days in prosperity. Now, you'll spend your years in pleasures. So, so God told you that days and years are, are supposed to be saturated with prosperity and pleasure. Imagine this people of God. God is saying that I want you to be prosperous and I want you to have pleasure in your life. But you got a soul. Learning to let your heart prompt you to give. That's an anointing. Because look what the word of God says. Receive the offering from those whose heart prompts them to give. If their heart prompts them to give, receive the offering from them. Wow. 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 This is powerful to me. God is saying to him, if their heart prompts them to give, receive their offering. So saints, your heart prompting you to give is a sowing anointing. It's an anointing of true worship. It's an anointing of wanting the Lord God from a pure place. When your heart prompts you to give, it is the symbol that you have laid down your life, that you belong to Jesus and that everything that you have belongs to him. When he sees that, he gives you the money trucks. The money trucks visit you. The money bags are supplied to you. And so when money bags come to you, your financial level is going to be raised. You're going to have more money in the earth because God can trust you with that more money because he know that you're going to sow more and he know that, that, that you're going to worship him more and thank him more and pay attention to him more. You can sow your way into multimillionaire status, multi-billionaire status. You can sow your way into multimillionaire multi-billionaire status because what you're doing is you're showing God that I know that you're my source. So I'm going to use my money for a good cause to push your man, to push your profit, to push your work. And as a result, God keeps on multiplying your seed sown. Now saints, you can't miss it because if God is multiplying my seed sown, the more I sow, the more money I'm going to have coming back to me. So money cometh 
It works for somebody that's challenging God with their seed. I can challenge God with my seed. I can tell God, all right, let me see what you're going to pit down, Lord. I'm going to pit down 1,000 right here. Now I'm in, a, I'm in a challenging match with God. God has to multiply the 1,000. So that 1,000 may come back to me in 10,000, 100,000, 500,000. But God has to respond to my seed. Because now me and God are in a wrestling match with my sowing. If I give God 5,000, if I give God 500, if I give God 200, 300, if I give God 400, all of my seed levels, depending on where my faith is, it is a response to God. It is a response. It, uh, it, it, it is a response. Now I'm responding to God according to my faith. Now, saints, if I have only $700 in my bank account, and I give God $500. I'm bountifully sowing. You know how I'm bountifully sowing? Because though somebody may look at $500 and say, that's small money. No, no, no. It's big money to me because of where I am in my finances. I'm bountifully sowing. Now, here's what God is going to do. He's going to put opportunities in my hand where I can sow, not from $700, but now I can sow probably from $1,400 or $2,100. Now my money is increasing so that I can sow at a higher level and still be at an advantage. Now watch this. As long as I'm willing to go higher and higher in sowing, God willing to go higher and higher in harvests. So what's going to happen? You're going to keep on going higher and higher. Sowing $10,000 not going to be no mystery to you. It's going to be easy because now you got 100000 in your bank account. Are you seeing this? You got 50000 in your bank account. Uh, so so sowing 10000 not going to be an issue because now you got 25000 And something that you should do with money is that you never let money become your dictator. And you have to remember your, your beginning. Sometimes you forget that. Why are you saving that $15,000? You forgot that you only used to have $200. You only got that $15,000 left from sowing a $10,000 seed from a $25,000 overall because God increased you. You see this? So if you stay humble, you'll remember, hey, I would have only been making $200 if it wasn't for the Lord. And the Lord checks you on that to see if money has become your dictator. And now you're looking at money like, hey, I got to save this, save this. God's saying, why are you trying to save money? You need to save your relationship with me and keep on doing what you've been doing that caused you to have this money. You see this? Sometimes you're trying to save that money and God's saying, save your fear of God. You feared me to get to this financial level. So stay with the fear of God so I can keep on taking you higher and higher. Save your true worship. Save your sowing grace because it was your sowing grace that even got you the $25,000. So saints, if as long as you are willing to stay the course and stay with the right heart, the right spirit, God will keep on taking you high and high in money. That's what happened with Abraham. Abraham kept going from rich to rich to rich till he was very rich. That's what happened to Job. He was the richest man on the East. That's what happened. The queen of Sheba is already rich. She ended up sowing what, over $285 million? It was a high, over hundreds of millions of dollars into Solomon. What is she doing? She's saying, Father, I know I need your wisdom. Father, I know I need your understanding. So I'm going to sow this money to show you how important your wisdom and your understanding is to me for me to live the type of life you want me to live on earth. That show you that you can sow for the perfect will of God. Because the Queen of Sheba did it. She wasn't just looking for answers. She wanted God's will for her life. 
Answers is about getting God's will for your life. She wanted God's perfect plan for her life. So she was willing to sow large money to invest in answers from God, the perfect will of God. Now with sowing, you must always be sensitive because God will always put you in a position where you will be given a seed instruction that is hidden. It's not really visible because God won't push you to sow, but he'll put it, the opportunity in your hands for you to sow. You got to decide not to eat the seed. You got to make up in your mind, I'm going to sow this seed. I'm going to listen to God. I'm going to stick with what the father telling me. And if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land off of that seed. That seed will bring you harvests. And saints, what I've studied with sowing is that there are some seeds that keep on bringing me harvests for the whole year. I've sown major seeds that bring me harvests from January to, 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 to December. I've experienced sowing seeds that bring me harvests going into the next year, two year harvests. Saints, one thing that I want to teach you about the harvest is that a harvest don't just come one time. Sometimes that harvest will come for the next five years of your life. So imagine if I keep on listening to God with the seed, my life is going to reflect harvest here, harvest there, harvest here, harvest there. So I'm going to keep on going and going and going. That's why sometimes you see a man of God, a woman of God rich. Do you know the level that they're sowing into God? And sometimes you see them rich because of the level of harvests that keep on ricocheting. It keep on coming back to them. They keep on having harvest after harvest because they're listening to the Father with finances. Don't let any situation on this earth decide your seed. Don't let your bank account decide your seed. Don't let your job decide your seed. You decide what seed you're going to sow. Remember 2 Corinthians chapter 9 say, you purpose in your heart to give. You make the decision you're going to give. God will respond to you when you make up in your mind that you want to give. You want to support the work of God. You want to support your prophet of God. And the Lord will give you a harvest after a harvest, after a harvest. The repetition of God in the provision of God always oh, deadly to the enemy. The repetition of God in the provision of God, it brings you into abundance. And the Lord want abundant wealth to move in your life nonstop. Sowing is attracting money. You become a magnet for money by listening to God with every financial instruction he gives you. Letting the Lord of the harvest become the Lord over your seeds. Because remember, the Lord of the harvest know how to get the seed to multiply and bring the seed back to you. So let him become the Lord over your seeds to activate that Lord of the harvest realm on your life. Now, saints, I want to say this to you, and I never said this before. It's powerful. You can receive an impartation of God's bosom into your bosom. Remember, King Jesus revealed to us that there's a bosom in the spirit. He said, good measure, press down, shaking together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. But that bosom was going to start operating through your giving. So you get that bosom to work. That bosom don't just work. You get that bosom to operate. Once I get my bosom to operate, supernatural money start moving in my direction. Supernatural increase start flooding my life. Financial favor start working for me in the hearts of people that I don't even know. God will use people I don't know to bless me. But what's going on? That's what financial favor creates. Financial favor makes People listen to God about my life because I'm listening to God financially with my life. And so people will be moved by God to increase me, multiply me, make me richer. I need to say that favor with God and favor with men makes you richer in money. Being richer is a divine place with, with God. Being richer, being more wealthy, or, 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 or being more wealthier is a divine place with God. 
the more wealthy you become, the more the Lord going to call on you and use you as his vessel to accomplish things for him. It's a supernatural place that God want to take you in financial favor. Let him take you there. Don't stop. And, and you got to do something with your finances that you never did before. You got to stop sitting down on sowing instruction. There's going to be something that God going to put in your power to do to unlock seed in your life. And you're going to have to sow that seed into your man of God, into your God given soul. And that's how God going to multiply that seed. God can't bless rebellious sowing. There's so many people, they sow, then they sow into the wrong soil, and then they, 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 they try to use what they was taught into that wrong soil. It's not going to work, baby. Wrong soil will not bring you a strong harvest. It's only going to bring you a strong man. Wrong soil, wrong sowing, and wrong soil will, will bring you into a stronghold. And don't be like Cain. Don't give God a seed that he don't respect. Let God respect your seed. Remember the Bible said that Abel, his seed was respected by God. Man, this some fine, this some fine sowing and reaping teaching. This is some fine seed time and harvest teaching. You can take this to the bank literally. You can take this to the bank literally. God got his own financial banking system. Banking in the supernatural presence of God. Banking in the fire of the Holy Ghost. Banking in the fire of the Holy Ghost. Banking in the fire of the Holy Ghost. That's where the fire of God shields you from attacks in your finances. And it burns up all those yokes, all those cords, all those bondages that keep you broke or keep you in delayed money. All money be loosed unto you right now. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare, may money, let there be large money in the sower's life. I decree as an apostle and prophet of God right now, let there be large money loose in the sower's life. Let everybody that listens to the father with the seed and let the father prompt them to give, let there be large money in their life. 